three. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guest is pretty cool. Like one of the cooler people we're going to meet Sweet. because we're just so geeky. But <laughs> before we talk to our super cool guest, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net landmodo.com if you're not automating your craigslist and your facebook postings postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek learn anything about anything investor ninjas.com scott todd how are you mark i'm great how are you i'm not good man um i'm not cool i don't like pe talking to people who are cool and have done all these cool things i'm intimidated but i'm gonna get over it because i'm a professional I think you've done some pretty cool things. What have I but done that's th like, the you know what? Have I owned a restaurant in Spain? No, I haven't. But our guest has. Owned. Right. Owned. <laughs> yeah. And that's one of, the, one of the things we'll talk about. No, no longer own. So, so Brian Orr is our guest. He is many things uh, in life. He's a DJ, a real estate investor. He's a family man. He's involved in nonprofit work. He's traveled around the world. He is cool. Brian Orr, welcome to the podcast. You've got a lot going on, man. I um, appreciate that. Thank you so much for having me. Let's just rewind the tape and kind of talk to us about how you became, you know, the twist life Brian Orr versus um, the Brian Orr you were born in is. Sure. Uh, so it, I started DJing in the mid 90s. And my DJ moniker was DJ Twist. It, it sort of um, came to define my life more so than I realized in just the way that I approach, you know, my day to day and the way that I approach uh, obstacles and, and, and whatever adventures life brings me. And I've been DJ Twist for 20 some odd years. And the the term the twist life actually came about from a couple of friends who who once hashtagging became popular they started you know whether they were drinking champagne in the hamptons or or partying on a boat somewhere and they'd be like oh we're living the twist life hashtag twist life because of some of the experiences that i've had as a dj so that's where that term even came about and it's actually um really expressed the way that i do live my life on a day to day very cool. Very cool. So what are you doing currently then? So currently I am operating, I guess, two businesses. One is the twist life. I've actually made a business out of that, which is going to manifest itself through a podcast that I'm releasing next month. And secondly, I have a company called Keaton Capital, which is a multifamily investment company. And beyond that, it's, uh, you know, just living, you know, family, uh, I, I, I'm on two nonprofit boards, um, you know, and just working and serving people in whatever capacity I can. Very cool. Very cool. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? All right, man. So how do you, how do you transition from where you were and the life that you had into this whole other world of like real estate investing? I'm not like, I mean, it, everybody does it right. Like everybody who is a real estate investor probably has transitioned somehow. What's the catalyst that gets you to convert? And then like, where, where is that taking you? Sure. So it, it's, it wasn't as direct uh, lights on, lights off type of conversion. I'm actually still DJing. Um, I started real estate investing about four years ago, but investing in general, I've been doing since the early 2000s. Uh, I traded or I was at, I had my series seven. I was a securities broker. I worked at, at Newberger, which was a subsidiary of Lehman Brothers um, before the crash. And I've done a million other things aside from DJing through, throughout, uh, you know, those years and investing was always something that I knew was very important. Unfortunately, I was never very good at it. I was not good at, you know, trying to play the market. I was not very good at picking, um, hospitality ventures to invest in as, as you mentioned earlier about the, the Spain thing. And, um, when I discovered real estate that I just found something that I, that I truly love that I was actually good at. And 
I, I just dove head over heels into real estate investing. So it's not as much a, uh, a lights on lights off kind of thing. It's just sort of like one portion of the day. Very cool. Very cool. So Brian, if you were going to give somebody some advice mm -hmm. about just making this transition, what, what advice would you give them? Uh, if you're speaking about the transition from in, in what capacity from like the so, nightlife to the, to yeah, the yeah, the, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, maybe not everyone's going to be living as, uh, dramatic a lifestyle as what you were doing with, with nightlife, but they might have a nine to five and they want to start getting into multifamily. They want to start doing these bigger deals. What would be your advice? Well, first I would say certainly don't think that it is, uh, um, I'm going to do this one day and I'm, and I'm going to do this the next day. There definitely is a transition period. As I mentioned, I'm still DJing that there's still income from that source. Uh, if, if you're going to start, if you have a nine to five and you're going to, and you want to become a full-time real estate investor, do it, start at night, do your nine to five. Don't leave your, your job that's paying you, that's paying your bills and what, um, do it and do it the best you can. Like you should do everything. But at night, now you start working on your real estate career, whether it be starting with meetups, meeting uh, other potential investors, doing your research. I actually got a, um, an online certification from Cornell in commercial real estate that I did you know, in the meantime, I did it on Sunday mornings, actually, before the kids woke up, um, you know, do do that, and then start diving into real estate. And it's only once you can actually replace your income, that I would ever suggest leaving your nine to five, I, w I certainly wouldn't suggest doing a cold turkey, because even if your first deal is a magic deal, you're, you're going to be in for a long road ahead. And, and it would be very risky to just say, you know, from A, a to B, like that. Scott, Ty, what do you think of that advice? Well, you know, I think the thing is, is that, uh, you, you do like, you can't, I mean, you shouldn't just jump unless you have some mechanism to, to support your, your family. I don't think it's wise to just jump. And I think that, uh, you got to kind of transition. One of the things I would tell you though, is like, wh whatever you're going to go do, like take, take action to go do it. Right. You know, like, do you, do you have to go to Cornell and get a, a a degree or cert certification you don't right like that's that's a path you can go down but i think the most important thing is that you're just taking action moving your feet and getting what you want and then grabbing the knowledge that you can as you go down i think that a lot of times what happens to people is that they that they that they don't take action because they feel like well i don't have all of the information that i need i need more information i need more education i need this degree i need this certificate and the reality is is that what you need is you need to move your feet and go, go do a deal. The minute you do a deal, everything changes. Like just do the deal, buy something and, and or sell something. <laughs> and then life changes all of a sudden. And, and you know what, Mark, it's the same thing that, you know, we got this, this phrase from Grant Cardone. We, we, you and I will throw it back and forth to each other. New problems, go make new nope. problems in your life, man. <laughs> the, the more problems you're making, you're right. the bigger you're growing, you're changing life up. Go make some new problems. Go figure out some new problem to solve. You'll survive. Yeah, I completely agree with that in the sense um, of, of taking action steps, 100%. And, and pursuing that certificate at Cornell was just one of the steps that I took. And it was three years into my investing journey that I decided to take that step. And it, 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 you're 100% accurate with just taking action. And even if, it, if it's you know at night, on the weekends, in the morning, two in the morning, whatever it is, take the action and do it deliberately and move forward 100%. So since you have branded yourself the twist life, mm -hmm. what, what is your favorite twist life story that you could share? Oh, that I could share. I, that you can share <laughs> in, case, in case the kids what are your, listening. What is your rating on your podcast channel for uh, explicit? Um, man, my favorite, my favorite story. So I've had, an incredibly, you know, lucky and blessed and fortunate journey. I've, I've done a lot of different things. I've been on, you know, TV and, and I've gotten to travel and a lot of, a lot of benefits have come from my DJ life. Um, 
let me think, oh man, and probably the best, here, here's an interesting story. So I was actually on, uh, do you know Kelly Ripa? You know, the morning sure. show live with Kelly. So I, I was featured, they had one week um, where they featured DJs, five DJs, one each week. And I was the fifth DJ on Friday. And I had just, I was pursuing a sponsorship from DJ software and they, in order to secure that sponsorship, I had to agree to use that software on television um, that day. Well, I, I, looking back, I did not take all the steps needed to prepare to learn that software before going on national television in front of 3 million people. Um, I thought, you know, I thought it was a slam dunk, right? Well, without getting too technical, one of the devices that you use to convert the digital media onto your turntables uh, um, is this interface. And it was very similar to the interface of the, the program that I was currently using. What I didn't realize though, was that interface required an AC adapter, an actual plug into the wall. The one that I was currently using was powered by USB. I have my computer, I have USB, no problem. Well, when I got to the show, I'm in the studio. It's about I don't know, 18 minutes before the show. And I don't have a power source for my new technology before going on national television. So I had absolutely no way to produce music. Luckily for me, I had a team with me and I can probably pull a million lessons out of this in terms of being prepared, in terms of surrounding yourself with good people and all of that. But I had a team with me where one was able to actually shoot back to my house and get the power adapter get back to the studio in time to plug it in. And I actually plugged in and powered up less than a minute before going on air. So that, you know, and, and it worked and it worked and I was able to, and I made it through the show and nobody knew the difference aside from that. I was probably sweating profusely, but you know, that, that, that's always been an interesting story that I draw a lot of different lessons from. That's, that's really crazy. So, did being on national television change your life in any way? No, no, except that it just, it gave me another story to talk about and, and it was yeah. fun. Um, I got a little bit of social exposure from it, you know, a little, a few more feeds, uh, uh, you know, a few more uh, social engagement and that sort of thing. But in the sense of, uh, I don't know. So, you know, that, that's an interesting question if you unpack it, because I kind of feel like every experience that you have in your life does change you in some way or another. So if we talk about, like I mentioned, the lessons that I learned from that, that changed me tremendously. If we're talking about the exposure that I got directly from being on television, I don't think that it, that it was a major catalyst in anything that happened forward, but certainly the experience did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I often, um, you know, we'll talk to people or I might even dream about, you know, one day getting on like the today show. And if, you know, if that happens, my whole life could change and my book would become this national bestseller. And I don't think that's the case. I think that's a fantasy. Um, and so that, that's really why I asked the question where I, I think that the, the outlook typically in business is, you know, serve your tribe and don't think that national exposure is going to change anything because that's not your tribe. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. I, I would say to, to um, your position, like one of the things that I didn't do following the episode was, was leverage it in a way that I probably could have. So when you have opportunities to do big things like that, or you get national exposure or, excuse me, or even local exposure, any exposure really, um, there, there's a whole system that, that you can put in place that actually, where, where, where you leverage the opportunity to directly to your tribe, for example, how do you provide value to them based on your most recent experience? And I think that that was something that I didn't execute as well as I could have. And if I did, that perhaps would have, um, would have helped a little more directly, but it would have still been something that I would have to do. It's not anything magical that happens just because 
you happen to be on this show or, or that show. Got it. Scott Todd, any thoughts? You know, I think that, um, <laughs> I think that a lot of times we do put emphasis on things that we, we, we have this bigger picture, right? Like we think of like the, the Oprah's book club, I'm going to go on Oprah and she's going to change my life. And well, Oprah might, you know, if Oprah's dedicating a show to you or if Oprah's throwing all her power behind you, but the mere like blip of, of something on a radar, whether it's, you know, ma making it onto the, to the today show or something, I think you get the blip, but then I think that it's that it's the 15 minutes of fame, right? Like it, it, it goes away. And I think that the, that the real, the real game changers in life come from the taking of the small actions over time, right? Like just changing your, the course that you're on one day at a time and don't, don't let up. I mean, Mark, when we look around at the, at the coaching students who are, who are doing it, who are doing what they want to do, or really anybody that's doing what they want to do, what they're doing is they're showing up daily and they're not just hoping and praying for that one big chance, uh, you know, on, on the today show or whatever it is. They're, they're just building. They're just continuing to build over and over and over again and showing up and they're just relentless. Yeah. I, th I think relentless consistency, grit. I I'd rather have all of those things than, than getting lucky. Well, let's, let's, let's look at it this way. You're not getting on that show if you don't have those things, right? So, so you, it's not going to just magically happen. They didn't just magically pick a name out of a hat or something that or you, you, even, you, how do you get your name into that hat? It is with the relentlessness, with the grit, with working hard, taking those action steps every day, stacking them and, and, you know, becoming better at what you do. And that's when you even have the opportunity to get that type of exposure. And then it's how do you leverage it? And, and does it become what you expect to define you? Or is it something that you use as a tool in your tool belt to, to catapult you to that next level? Yeah, no, absolutely. So, so Brian, I'd be curious, given your, the, the Renaissance nature of your life, um, what do you think of when you think of the word successful? For me, successful is, I would say the amount of, or the, I would say in volume, or I would say the amount of impact that you have on other people. I think that you can measure success by how you change the world, not necessarily, you know, your own bank account by any means. I don't consider that in any way successful. If somebody tells me this guy, you know, makes X dollars a year, or this guy has X in his bank account. That means nothing to me. If you tell me that that guy um, just spent three weeks in Guatemala building houses, to me, that's a successful guy. And, and you know, what he does aside from that doesn't really matter to me. So I, in, in short answer, success to me is how you impact other people's lives. I love it. I love it. Scott Todd, what do you think? Well, I mean, I, I agree with them. I think it's, uh, it's, it's not necessarily about your life. I think it's, it's the lives that you can change, right? Like it's, it's how, um, it's the impact that you have on people and, you know, are you adding value to the world? That's, that's really the ultimate success. It's not, I mean, you can judge it by a dollar amount in the bank account or net worth, but the reality is, is that it really comes back down to, to one thing. Did, did you make a difference? Who did you make difference for? And the more people that you can impact, the more people that you can make a difference for, that's, that is where success lies. Yeah. And I don't even think it needs to be even that dramatic. Like you don't need to change millions and millions of people's lives. I, I mean, even if we just took it to a, a level of, Hey, you know, am I a good parent? Is that mm -hmm. good enough to, to show up on the times that you need to show up? Um, you know, with this, you know, patience and kindness, which is at times, I mean, we all have kids really hard to do. And I think one, I'm oh, yeah. sorry. Go, I no, think 100% ahead. you're right. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't, we're talking on, on much larger scales here, but, but, you know, nothing is more impactful than, than a successful parent. I, I, you know, we're talking about shaping lives and, and, and the next generation of people on this earth. Um, you don't have to be a multimillionaire. You don't have to go to Guatemala to build houses. If, if your kids, you know, are, end up being respectful and, and good citizens and quality people, then that 
it's 100% successful in my book too. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I agree. So, um, Brian, I know you're a big reader. What would be the book that you gift the most or recommend the most to other people? Oh, in real estate, you guys have probably heard this, but I gift rich dad, poor dad all the time. Um, for me, it's the mindset. And when I, you know, as an early, I'm early in syndication and uh, some of the people who I'm working with are non-accredited investors and there's a whole thing to go with that. But, you know, they, they know that real estate is a good vehicle. They understand that there can be money to be made there, but they don't quite grasp the full mindset of assets and liabilities and that type of thing. They, there's a severe lack of financial literacy in, in our nation as a whole. And I think that that book really helps people just wrap their brain around the, the, the mindset of, you know, pre- becoming or, or purchasing things that, that are valuable. And it, yeah, helps, I, it, it certainly helps my, my potential investors become actual investors. Yeah, that, that is one of the few transformative books out there, for sure. Scott Tyler, I'd be curious, has there been another book besides Rich Dad, Poor Dad that is as transformative than that you've, you've read? I mean, we're talking about like, is, I think Rich Dad, Poor Dad came out in like 99. I mean, it I, is definitely the one... It What's is that? definitely the one that uh, I think that yeah. most people who venture down in real estate investing, that that's the, that's one that they often quote, right? Like they'll often quote that book because I think that what it does is it brings a different set of understanding to, um, to, to wealth and he just breaks it down so simply, even in like cash flow quadrant, like to this day, what, what are we talking about? Like over 20 years later or close to it for cash flow yeah. quadrant. Like there's still things in there that I grasped, like the whole, you know, are you an employee? Are you uh-huh. self-employed? Are you the business owner? The investor, an investor. fall within within the um, the quadrant. So I mean, I think it's I think that what he did was he took he took this complex topic and he broke it down to to where anybody could understand it, and he he made it look easy. Is what he did. Yeah, for me, that's been the most impactful as far as uh, gifting, like you mentioned. I mean, another thing that you mentioned Grant Cardone earlier, like 10X um, for me was big because that also, you know, changed my mindset to from small scale to large scale thinking, like shoot big, shoot really, really big. And I, excuse me. And I think that that's helped me um, in most recent years as well. Yeah, no, I know. He was on my podcast before this, uh, the Best Passive Income podcast, and kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> it was kind of a crazy interview, but it, it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun, uh, for sure. And, um, but I, I, think, I, I, I do think him and Gary V, um, these are like what I would call rubber band people where they, uh, you know, really kind of show you like how far you can stretch before you break. And yeah. I think, I think th- those are important people to have in your life just to know what is my breaking point. Not that I would, you know, recommend that somebody kill themselves every single day to reach their goal, but to know your limit, I think is important to, while you're doing that and to see what you're capable of. Uh, I think that's an, an, an important sort of uh, thing to, to go through in life, just to know. Right. Right. I agree. Uh, Gary Vee's another one uh, person who I'm sort of modeling uh, the twist life after or, or the business of the twist life after and like, you know, endless amounts of content and everything that he, that he preaches on to try to actually build out that business now. All right. Fantastic. Well, uh, Brian, I want to thank you so much for, for coming on the podcast and, and uh, discussing your, your Renaissance man lifestyle but now we're at the point where we're going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, another book, maybe something mm-hmm. else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? My tip of the week, um, I would say 
fail forward and don't ever let your failures define you. You know, we talked about that Kelly example, like that, that certainly was not a success. Uh, it was once I was, once I aired, but up to that point, there were many failures in that morning. Um, you know, you can either let a failure crush you or you can really, really grow from it. And I think failing forward, you know, there's a few steps like acknowledge your failure, reflect on, reflect on it, um, assess the situation, you know, then, then pocket it away and, and move forward and failing forward. Well, we didn't even get into the restaurant, but yeah, failing forward, <laughs> just, just don't ever let your failures define you use them as a, as, as a step to, to, you know, climb yourself, your, yourself, your business, whatever higher. And, um, and don't ever, don't ever let a failure take you down. I love that. I love that. A lot of, a lot of wisdom in that. And just kind of looking at everything as a learning opportunity, whether it's a failure, it's a success. We just, it's just constant growth, constant learning. Don't take everything so personally. There's a lot of things that are outside your control. And if you fail forward, you just keep going. Um, you know, take the Edison approach. You know, how many times did he, <laughs> did he right, fail the, with the light bulb? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, Fit 100%. Yeah, I love that. Scott Todd. I know that you've got an amazing tip of the week as always. No pressure though. What's your tip of the week? Mark, I want you to travel more. I want to give you some traveling superpowers and I want you to check out planmoretrips.com. It is, it is a uh, plugin that you can add and look, it just takes planning your trips from airfare to hotels, makes it super simple. It's a pretty cool trip, especially if we're going to live the lifestyle that we want and just travel, baby. Landmoretrips.com. Can I use points with this stuff? I've got so many points now. What it's doing is it's showing you, um, showing you like the, um, the like the best air airfares where you want to go. You can you can coordinate it. You can send it to your family uh, so that you guys all stay on the same page. You can, um, you know, it's it's looking at all these different resources. It's looking at Airbnb. It's looking at you know Delta. It's looking at everything, man. It's like thousands of websites. It's, it's searching and finding the best deals. Wow. All right. Another phenomenal tip. Well, my tip of the week is learn more about Brian or check out his upcoming podcast at thetwistlife.com. And I think after just exploring that website, you'll feel cooler like I do, <laughs> which, which is great. So um, Brian, are we good? Yeah, guys, this is great. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate the conversation. Awesome. Scott, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right. I just want to remind the listeners today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how 16 weeks up the mountain land of the up the mountain of land investing can literally transform your life. Make that passive income without renters, without rehabs, without renovations, without rodents, and have your Sherpa Scott Todd take you up there quickly, safely, and efficiently. Schedule a call to learn more. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. And please, if you are enjoying the podcast, if you're getting value from it, the only way, the only way we're going to get quality of guests like a Brian Orr from the twistlife.com is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit course, as well as the latest wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. All right. Thanks, everybody. Scott, are we ready? We're good, Mark. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Not bad. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everyone.